All right, we are here with Gudarshan Mangat ahead of one championship, 158 Friday, June 3 in Singapore. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing awesome, man. Just going through the motions, getting ready to get that victory on Friday. And how has it been getting back to Singapore? How are you feeling there? I love Singapore. This is the first time we actually got to walk around and check it out. So I finally got to see the city and the city is absolutely amazing. I've been here since Thursday, so I got to enjoy it and I can't wait to enjoy it after the fight. All right. Well, let's talk about that fight then. What is going to happen on Friday night in that one championship circle? I think you're just going to see the most dominant version of myself. Um, I've, I've improved everywhere. I'm a well-versed mixed martial artist, and I think it's just going to be too much for Y2K in this fight. And uh, I think you're just going to see somebody that's going to be a serious champion contender in the future. Yeah, Y2K, he, he was building up quite a record there in one championship. Uh, his last fight, uh, were you surprised by that? Last fight? Uh, no. Um, I think he's just aggressive. Uh, he comes forward, and uh, sometimes that doesn't work out your way. All right. Let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, I read that you learned English watching wrestling. Uh, having said that, who would be your Mount Rushmore of wrestlers? My Mount Rushmore wrestlers would be Brett the Hitman Hart, <laughs> be Shawn Michaels, The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Did you watch the uh, AEW pay-per-view yesterday? I didn't, no. <laughs> <laughs> the WWE guy? Yeah, I, I, I got a friend on there, uh, Atmam Singh. He's, uh, yes. Yeah, he's, he, he's in AEW now. So, And then I got Jinder Mahal over in WWE, and he's a good friend of mine also. Oh, that's great. I mean, we, we've seen the heavyweight champion one, uh, Arjun Bula. He's interested in going into that pro wrestling world. Is that something you've ever wanted to do? I think I'd be awesome for it. I'm, I'm kind of like the Indian Rey Mysterio. So, you know, <laughs> I've got that athletic ability, excited to watch. I'll do the super high flying moves. So I'm, I'm always open to something like that. I like that. I like that. Okay. Um, all right. Let's go back to uh, MMA though, I guess. Uh, flyweight, probably one of the most talent heavy divisions here how many wins do you think you need to get into the title picture i think next two three wins uh, i think puts me in the title picture and the flyweight division i think whoever champ of the flyweights is basically the best pound for pound guy in one championship i think that is the deepest the division in one is uh it's the toughest one and so you're from on top of the mountain and i believe that's where i'm headed yeah it's a pretty stacked division uh, a couple other fights on this card in your division we've got uh kairat agmatov and tatsumitsu wada we got reese mclaren Zhi Wei. uh you'll be keeping a close eye on them i imagine yeah um i'll be sticking around after i get my victory i'll be sticking around to watch uh, the main card which is very interesting for my division and tell us a little bit i think uh, about your how you got into this your grandpa I, th I think was pretty instrumental in you becoming an mma fighter right yes uh he was instrumental in it. It was something that I, something that ignited in me to pursue. But at the beginning, my parents weren't so supportive of it. But then my parents and my like, grandpa, that they came to one of my fights and I got my nose broken in five seconds. And that's where everybody <laughs> thought I would come to my senses and walk away from the sport because now I kind of saw the real, the realness of it. And I fought through it. I fought through it. I won it. And my grandpa told my dad, he's like, don't ever try to stop him. We've never seen this version of him. He actually passed away uh, just a couple of months ago. And so uh, he was a big part of why I was able to pursue what I, what, what I was able to pursue with the support I have from my family. So I imagine he'll be on your mind in this fight and you're hoping to dedicate a victory to him. Of course. I, I, I want to dedicate it to him and one of my teammates, my brother, uh, soulmate almost, uh, Kyle Reyes, who uh, also passed away. This will be the first time I'm fighting and done a camp without him in my corner. But instead, he will be looking over above me. And I definitely want to dedicate his spirit and represent his spirit in the cage. And this is a big one for me to do that for him. Yeah, I know that was a big loss for everyone at the gym. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, how, how is it difficult when it must be so horrible when things like that happen? How do you, how do you deal with it and, and keep training and keep pushing forward? Yeah, for me, it was really tough because uh, especially since the time that I signed with one, he was my main guy. And especially during COVID, uh, we built bubbles and that usually consisted of one or two people. And he was my bubble for almost a year and a half, two years. He helped me train for two fights um, that actually didn't end up happening. 
And, but me and him were together 24 seven, even living together almost at, at one point. And um, so lo losing him was, it's like I lost a part of myself and I had to rediscover that part of myself and still kind of come forward. His daughter is somebody that's still part of my life. And now I've kind of changed missions that it's my, my mission to make sure she has a good life and make sure she's happy and her father's spirit is represented. And I carry that very closely to myself and I will be representing that. I mean, it's, it must be very tough. I, I, how, how do you channel that into the right energy going into the, when you step in the cage? Is it difficult to kind of block that out or do you feel any extra pressure in that regard? I don't feel extra pressure, but I've learned through um, practice that pain can become strength. Pain can become power. Um, instead of, I try to find healing from it. I try to get rid of the sorrow and try to, uh, the way the whole situation happened was it wasn't like, you know, something that was sudden. It was something that happened slowly and I was there to watch it and witness it all the way till the end. And I learned that I can instead drive support and power and strength from that pain of losing him and represent it. Um, that's something that I've practiced and I can feel him. Like I can feel him around me. I can feel him looking over me and I know he will be there in my corner uh, on Friday night. Uh, I suppose that brings the whole community together in the gym, doesn't it? And um, makes everyone stronger, right? Yeah, it, it's one of those things that the outside world doesn't understand that that the MMA community, we're not just teammates. Because sometimes like my my bond with some of my teammates are closer than some of my bonds with my family because we're pushing each other. We're breaking each other. We're helping each other discover a deeper part of ourselves because we got to push our thresholds every single day. And so I don't have any tattoos or anything, but I got scars from Kyle all over my back on my body. And those mean more to me than any kind of tattoo I can go get because those are constant reminders that we have those moments. And, uh, it's, it's, it's just the family dynamic in an MMA gym is, I believe, even stronger than, than some of the ones that you have outside of the gym. And so it's not just teammates. You can, I don't even call them teammates anymore. It is family. It's a different kind of warrior family. And are, you, are, there, are there steps you take to try and help Kyle's family and everything like that? Do people come together in that regard? You know, would, would a, a, a bonus here help you perhaps to help them out a little bit? Um, it's his daughter. That's the, it, it was really just him and his daughter. They, uh, they were the teammates. They were this power, power crew. And of course, like, you know, uh, Kylie's always on my mind. Kylie's somebody that I want to give a good life to somebody that I always try to bring a smile to. And she brings a smile to me and, and a bonus would definitely be something that I, I, I'm going to be seeing her this summer. I'm going to be spending time with her this summer. So we'll definitely celebrate that, uh, together and a big part of, that would be her dad's spirit is the one who carried me to those bonuses. Yeah. And what would it mean for you then to get this win uh, with everything that's happened uh, on such a big stage, one championship, one five, eight. It, it means everything because there was a lot of processing that went through in the past year since you last saw me, it was after that, that I, uh, that I lost him. There was a point where, I don't know if I had the energy inside of me to come back and do this because everything that related to MMA reminded me of him. He, he was somebody that was so uh, close to me in such a short span of time and everything MMA related was him. And we discussed it. We laughed about it. We, we had a lot of moments with it. We spent a lot of rounds sparring and training 24 um, seven. But then I had to find something beyond myself. And that was his daughter and showing that, that, she's still here and that is a part of him and that's what gets me in the cage and that's what i want to represent and that's what i want to bring to the high stages the crazy thing about kyle is i believe he was one of the world's best the world just didn't get to see it he's fought some of the world's best if you go through his record he's fought champions of the biggest promotion so he was somebody that was never afraid he was fearless he was somebody we were both each other's yin and yang he reminded me of how i got into mma is that i didn't overthink it i was kind of like a kid having fun and along the way it starts becoming more serious it starts becoming more of a job and he will always remind me that dude we get to do this like this is a dream we get to live this we get to just have fun with it we get to do something other people can he was always a constant reminder to me not to take it too seriously but take it serious enough where you're still having fun with it 
All right. And uh, just to end on a, maybe a lighter note, I, uh, we all know you're a fan of NFTs, crypto, everything like that. Uh, if you finish your opponent inside the circle and you do get that bonus, is, is some of that going to be invested? Um, very possible. Um, the way the market's going, I might be able to afford a uh, board ape soon enough. So that 50 K definitely would uh, <laughs> definitely, it definitely go a long way. Um, there's definitely some new projects on the horizon. So, um, uh, bear market is where they say, uh, wealth is built. So right now that's the stage. Give me that 50 K and I'll turn it into something else. And then I'll go on the apprentice with Chakri <laughs> and I, I'll try to win that too. <laughs> so I'm the MMA fighter and the businessman that, that has the brains to do it all. Have you asked them about that? Would you really seriously like to go on The Apprentice? Oh, I would love to be on The Apprentice. So The Apprentice, when it was Donald Trump, like, you know, before President Donald Trump, uh, when I was in elementary, my dream was to be a mogul like him. Everybody in the yearbook in elementary, before I ever thought I would ever be doing MMA, that's what my mindset and what I was known as in the school was an entrepreneur always, somebody that was always looking for the next business venture. And um, The Apprentice was something I loved and I would love to be on it. All right, Chatri, if you are listening, we're going to make that happen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gadarshan Manga, thank you so much for speaking to us and good luck for the fight on Friday. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, bro.